Hey folks, so in this video I'm going to be showing you a demo of the gestures component that came with the Runeberg VR plugin. First we're going to have a quick walkthrough of the level that came with the demo project up in GitHub. So if you don't have it yet, just head on over to the to this GitHub repo and clone or download the copy of the of the demo. All right. Um, yep. So once we've gone through the demo level, we're gonna. I'm gonna just quickly explain some of the nodes that you have with the gesture component and how to use them. Okay. So let's start with it, I guess. All right. So press the right trigger, draw a gesture in the air, and release. So if it turns red, that means the gesture is not recognized. Let's try one that's actually in the known database. So circle, and that should summon up a f snowstorm for us. You can see some cool particle effects there. Another one is a triangle. You can see it would summon up a firestorm for us. Again, some more cool fi fireworks effect there. All right, and let's wake this baby up with the infinity symbol. So you can see it's now starting to wake up. This um, meshes, by the way, and all of the particle effects you've just seen came from the UE sample content, so the elemental sample content, so they're in the learning tab from Epic. So if you want to grab them, hello, giant. All right, so once it's nice and quiet now, just going to save a gesture from the left controller, Z. Let's try to play it back with another one. So you can see it's registered it. If we try it from looking at a different direction, you could see it doesn't say, uh, recognize it. Let's save it from this direction as well. So there's a bit of tolerance, of course, from zero to 90 degrees for the gestures. But if you want to be sure that the gestures recognize on 360 degrees, so you need to save the gesture four times facing north, south, east, and west. All right, so let's have a closer look at this gestures component. First, let's head on over to the code. What you get are actually two pieces of things um, for this gestures component system. First is you've got the gestures component itself, and the other is the database where you would store all of your um, gestures and where the gesture component would actually look for known gestures to compare to. All right. So if you go to content map six underscore gestures, you should see the map there that we've just played through and as well as a VR pawn. So let's open up the VR pawn. All right. So you see this is a whole code for the demo that we've just walked through. Of course, there are a couple of functions there for casting and a bunch of other stuff. But what we're going to be going through is just a basic component system and a few of the nodes so you have a little bit of an understanding of what they do. All right, so first things first, make sure that you attach the Runeberg VR gestures component onto a motion controller. As you can see from the screen here, you have you can have two different gesture components onto the motion controller. Each of them can do um, different things. So for this demo, for example, I did the gesture recording from the left hand and in the right hand you could recognize save gestures. Of course, in, in your experience, you might choose to pre-record a lot of your gestures. So your player will just have to try to play back a gesture and play up uh, an effect, sorry, play off an effect based on that gesture if it's recognized or not. All right, so how do you recognize, uh, sorry, how do you save a gesture? First, you need to do uh, start a recording session. So the node name is start recording gesture. And after it's finished, you should run the stop recording gesture. So in the demo, I was just using the trigger. So if the user presses the trigger, the gesture recording starts and if you release the trigger the gesture 
recording stops. So, and that's it. And then I'm, there is also a node called draw VR gestures. It just helps a little bit on debugging. And plus it also has a nice effect. So you could choose the color, the lifetime, the thickness of the lines that comes up from the draw gestures. All right. The other nodes that are critical for this um, component is the, again, start and stop recording gesture. But this time in here, once we stop the recording gesture, we're not actually saving it to the database. All right, I think I may have forgotten to say that. So here, um, earlier, if we're going to actually record it for saving it to the known gestures, you just have to tick this save to DB um, tick box there on this node. All right, and of course you could also change the recording interval. So 0 0.05 um, means it will record a point in space every 0 0.05 seconds until you've um, initiated a stop recording gesture. Okay, and let's go back down here. You can do a fine gesture. So if you do a fine gesture, what that does is it looks at the recorded gesture, the last recorded gesture on that component. So here on the right hand, so when the user plays, um, presses the trigger, they start a recording gesture and then they stop when they release it. And then after releasing the trigger, uh, the code then looks for that gesture in the known database. And where is this known database set? You just click the Runeberg Gestures VR here. And there are a couple of variables that you can set for it. So first is a known gestures database. So you can set up a database here. All right. And just open that up again. And a global, there's a global threshold. So the global threshold is um, refers to how different two gesture patterns can be for testing uh, the similarity and there is also a vector threshold which is how far apart each point can be for the similarity test. You need to um, kind of play around with the global threshold and vector threshold to find the right fit for your experience um, but pretty much the defaults should work well, should work fine as well as the recording interval. So the more um, recorded points, the more accurate um, the gesture is going to be. So, so it's a balancing act between the amount of resources that you want your experience to use up versus the um, versus the level of accuracy that you want out of the the experience. So you need to find kind of like the magic um, fit for all of these three variables: global threshold, vector threshold, and recording interval. But for most most parts, the defaults that I've set on the code should be fine. All right, so the known gestures database is just a standard data asset. So to create one, you just need to create a, a data asset, so like that. And if you've installed, obviously if you've installed the, the plugin, you should be able to find the base class that came with the plugin. And then click select and then just create it as normal. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. So it's how easy it is to use and integrate this um, gesture component into your VR experience. So the code is freely available in um, GitHub and you can, if you want to find out how I'm doing the gesture recognition, I'm using an algorithm called dynamic time warping. So may not be the best, but it works. And any suggestions from people out there on how to improve it, um, like using fast DTW and um, other improvements on the algorithm, please just let me know. All right. And yep, or contribute directly to the GitHub source. That'll be better. Okay, so hope you have fun with that. And yeah, any feedback? And would love to know if you um, on what projects you intend to use the component. And yeah, so it'd just be fun to know what um, people are using the this plugin for. All right, so thanks, guys, and see you on the next video.